church is one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. Praise the Lord. So, as we continue, minsan pa, buksan natin ang ating mga Biblia at tayo ay nasa 13th chapter of Romans. So, we are studying verse 8 to 14. So, in today's sermon, I have titled it, Love Fulfills the Law. So, let us all together open our Bible and let us read the passage of the text. So, in verse 8, it says, Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not commit uh, you shall not commit murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 10, love does, not, love does no wrong to a neighbor, and therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know that the time, I uh, know that time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is foregone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision of the flesh to gratify its desires. Praise God for the reading of His Word. So, as we continue, again, I would like to join me in prayer again. Let us all pray. Father, we come to you in Christ and ask through your Holy Spirit to help us, help us to understand, to walk in love, love that comes from you, because you are the first who love us. Love that does not enjoy or rejoice for what is evil, rather to obey your moral law, to do what is good. This is good for us and for your glory. Lord, help us as church to exemplify your love in our daily life. And this is all we pray in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you very much. I hope and everyone are ready to listen to our sermon today. So as we continue, last week, we are so glad that our brother or elder Dong is carefully and properly preached in the verses 1 to 7 in the same chapter, Romans 13. That was our relationship to our government. So when we understood that we as Christians are under the government of God through our earthly governments. As all governments are instituted by God. So every government are instituted or instituted by God. So I know that some of us, marami po sa atin ay nagre So we are grumbling or asking about our governments. Because our governments are corrupt, they are not doing well. But in Paul's letter to Romans, at that time, they are actually persecuted, persecuted as well. So as Christians, we should, we should obey the governments even paying taxes in the last verses. So the connection of last verse and our verse today is even to pay the proper taxes is our foundation or fundamental 
uh, obedience to the Lord through our government. And even last week, we clearly understood when to obey the government and when not to disobey. So when the government is mandating what is absolutely wrong for what is the man, man, uh, for what is the instruction of the Lord, and that's the time we can disobey the government. But as long as they are giving us a proper, correct instruction, we are not to disobey our governments. Any governments we are now. So we have, we have clear understanding that rebellion to government is rebellion to the Lord. So today as we continue in our studies of this great epistle of Apostle Paul, so looking again this very good verses in verses 8 to 14, so as I told you a while ago, the title of my sermon is Love Fulfills the Law. Or the law. We as Christian, Christians, how we obey the law. The law of the Lord. Of course, we are not obeying the law because for us to be saved. We Christians who are saved by grace, we are destined to obey the law. That is the the fruit of our salvation, or that is the fruit of our faith. Being saved and continuously sanctified by God, we are to obey His law. Actually, in human history, in any time, Christians are the most exemplary or they are the best people who obey the government despite the government are not protecting them. Despite they are under persecutions. Just think about that. I just reading a story of wars in any or so many countries. A lot of people are killing their neighbors. It's so horrible. Napakahirap na makita sa isang bansa na ang kanilang mamamayan ay nagpapatayan. Binabaril ang isa, ang isa ay binabaril naman or sila-sila ay nagpapatayan. This is horrible to look at that a country were fighting and killing each other. We can see that in a lot of story of wars. But a lot of people, especially Christians, they are the peacekeeping or they are the peacekeepers. They are the first to obey the commandment of the Lord to love thy neighbors. Today in our time, we are not waging wars that much in fist or even in guns. But we are at war now in morality. In morality which are prevalent in our society. A lot of people shouting about love, not hate. Pag-ibig, pagmamahal, hindi pag-aaway. But they don't know really the meaning of love. Even we could not love unless we don't know the love of God to us. So as of today, our problem is moral issues in our society. So Paul, in his letter, the verse 7 and verse 8, he gave the very foundation of our Christian living or the foundation of our belief that we as Christians, we should pay taxes. We should honor the government which was due to them. Respect what's, respect the, 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 the government officials as it is owed to them. So now Paul is saying in verse 8, 
So point number one, our study is love each other. This is a common always saying for a lot of people, especially quote-unquote Christians. So in verse 8, we are told or instructed to love each other. Paul is reminding Christians to do this very basic foundation of their of our living. Ito yung pinakapangunahin sa ating paglakad sa Panginoon. To love each other. To love our neighbors. In verse 8 it says, Oh no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves, another has fulfilled the law. So why, why Paul says like that? To love each other is fulfilling the law. And we can understand it as we read, because if we love our neighbor, we will not commit any harm to them. But let us look a little bit closer. Even in the previous passages, Paul is always telling us Christians, genuine love is to abhor what was what is evil. So in our daily in our daily life. We should be living in loving kindness to our neighbors, whoever they are. It's not just because they are Christians or the same belief with you, whoever they are. So in the same chapter, we'll just go back in verse 9. Verse 9 and 10, it says, Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. We can understand that when we love each other, it is in the basis of brotherly love. It is in the basis of godly love. We could not love each other if we don't understand the love of the Father to us. And the love of Jesus, through, through Jesus, and even the love of Jesus. If we look at the scriptures, if you hear clearly the scripture as it was read a while ago, in Matthew 22, Jesus is clear what he is saying. Maliwanag na sinabi po ito ng Panginoong mismo. Siya mismo nagsabi. Inulit niya ito sa kanyang mga disipulo. Or inuulit niya rin ito sa ating yon. He is repeating today to us, as I read. Verse 37, Matthew 22. And he said to him, you shall, love your, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like, like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So Jesus is saying it clearly and even Paul is keep on emphasizing the basic foundation of our living in this world. To love each other, to love our neighbor. Think about that the Ten Commandments is sum up in two commandments after Jesus come on this earth. The first four commandments, that is our relationship with God. So yung apat, na unang apat na commandment ay ang ating relasyon sa Diyos. And the second six to ten commandment is our relationship to our neighbors. So Jesus is just making it a summary. And even Jesus saying, all the commandments depend on the law and, or of these commandments depend the law and the prophets. I don't know if you can remember still the Ten Commandments. I just read it somehow in different uh, rendition or translation maybe. So first commandment, God said, I am the Lord thy God or your God. You shall not have any other God before me. Second commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord God in vain. 
Third is remember the, the, the Lord's Day or the Sabbath. Honor thy father and mother. That's the fourth commandment. Now, the sixth, seven, and eight, it says like this. Thou shalt not kill in, in King James Version. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. You shall not covet thy neighbor's good. So believers are expected to do the same. We as saved by Christ, we are the one are expected to follow the law. Now I would like to reiterate that we are to follow the law, not to be not to save, because the law could not save us. But rather being in Christ, being saved by Christ, being brought out from darkness into life, being alive, we are to obey the law. We are not anti-numianist or hindi tayo yung dahil saved by grace na, so hindi ko na kailangan ng batas. The law is needed for our sanctification. The law is needed to tell us that we are growing in grace. So believers are expected to do, to do that. Even Paul in his letter, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 14 to 17, as we hear the scripture, scripture reading, in verse 14, Paul says, And above all this, put on love, which bind everything together in perfect harmony. Our living is with love, with brotherly love. Love is the first foundation of our living. We as Christians, we should love our neighbor. And that's why when we love our neighbor, verse 9 and, and 10, Paul reminds us that the, the commandments of the Lord. For the commandments, it says, You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up with these words. You shall love your neighbors or neighbor as yourself. Think about when every one of us are obedient to the moral law of the Lord, the Ten Commandments. There is no separation of families because there is no adultery. There is no chaos in family. I'm so sad that I have a lot of friends. They are asking me for a counsel. What they should do? My husband, my wife, suddenly after several years said to me, I don't love her. I don't love him. I want to come out from our marriage. Come to know because of adultery. God hates that kind of life. Murder. Even Jesus bring to our attention that adultery and murder, it is started not is it started not in act of doing it, but even from the very conception in our heart to kill a brother is no need first to have a knife. To commit an adultery is no need to have a sexual uh, agreement with her or with him. It is started in the lost from the heart. We as Christians, we are the e example into this time. And that's why it's very scary. It's, it's very um, shameful for a church, for a Christian who are involved in this kind of life or of this, of this life, lifestyle. Then Paul in verse 10 very clearly, clearly says, Love does no wrong to a neighbor. 
Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. So true love, first, of course, with the Lord, with our God, we love God. And when we, when we said we love God, it is sin to our love to our neighbors. And there, are a lot, there is a good example to us, husbands, that our neighbors are our, our uh, that our neighbors is our wife. They are neighbors before and we become our girlfriend or boyfriend, they become, or we, they become their own husbands. So, if they are your neighbor and now your wife or husband, they should love them more and more. So there is no harm for real or genuine love. So the problem of our time today, they are saying love, 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 but actually they are just doing what is the opposite. For us church, as we continue studying this book of Romans, we are clear, even I like to hear our brethren, they are very strong that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. They are very strong in saying that no one can separate us from the love of Christ. And we should be strong also to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That should, that should be the same. Because the same sovereign Lord is saying to us. In verse 11, Paul says, Besides this, you know, that, 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 uh, you, you know the time. That hour has come for, for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us uh, now than when we first believed. So Paul probably is seeing or seeing the basis of our conviction is because we are awake already. We are already alive of our deadness. We are in the we are living in, in the day. And while we are anticipating the realization of our salvation, the coming of Christ, we are not doing or practicing or this is not our lifestyle to violate the moral law of the Lord. In verse 12, the night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the work of darkness and, fought, and put on the armor of light. Paul is repeating, night is far gone as the present age. Ito yung kasalukuyang panahon nila na prevalent yung sexual immorality. Maging sa ngayon sa atin, even in our time today, it's so prevalent. I just remember, I just watching a, a clip of a, of a news, there is a confirmation of justice, uh, Supreme Justice nomination in America, even she is little bit off with regards to sexuality. But anyhow, so this is the prevalent today. Christians are not are not to this kind of life. We are living not in night or we are living in not in the in the same lifestyle of our present age, but rather we are living as a light of this world or we are living as light. Because Jesus is our light. We live for Christ. In John chapter 8 verse 12 it says, Again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So, it is clear, clear to us, Christians, maliwanag sa atin na hindi na tayo nabubuhay sa buhay ng mundong ito, but rather nabubuhay na tayo sa kaliwanagan dahil si Kristo ang ating liwanag. Even Paul is saying, cast off the work of the darkness. 
So meaning we are continuously as Christian to renew our mind, to renew our daily life. If we, if you have still that kind of desire, the violation of moral law of the Lord, and it's time to check yourselves, to check ourselves. That is not our living supposed to be. In verse 13, Paul is clearly stating the walk of the night or the, the dark, uh, dark part of our life or the dark uh, way of life. In verse 13, let us walk properly in the daytime, not in orgies or orgies, not in drunkenness. So, Christians are to think about that. Not in sexual immorality and sensuality. Not in quarreling and jealousy. Let us walk properly as in the daytime. This is Paul's warning to us Christians. If someone saying, I am Christian, but is still living in this way there is a big problem might be you are not a christian especially if you are living for these things for almost so many time of your life that is so problematic ibig sabihin mayroong pattern sa buhay na ito pa rin ang buhay walang pagbabago Problemado po yan. That's a stern warning for us. We should walk in the newness of life. And even Paul, is clear, he clearly mentioned these things because these are prevalent, prevailing on his time. And most probably a lot of so-called Christians are engaging with this style of life. For us, we should not be mingling or clinging or even we should cut our desire of this, this, this orgies, this drunkenness, sexual immorality, sensuality. We should not be quarrelsome. We should not be easily to jealous. These are the dead darkness or these are the, the attitude of the night. These have no place for a genuine Christians like you and me. That's why in the church it is very clear. We as church having our membership class, we are clearly told uh, we, we are clearly outspoken about this. Maliwanag po natin itong sinasabi sa at sa mga nagpapa members sa church natin. Now we are looking for a genuine Christian who can stand up that they are really renewed. Of course, maybe some are still in, engaged with this. And I pray. And I pray that they should and I pray that they should be convicted of the Lord and repent for this kind of sins. We as Christians, we need to check our life about this kind of lifestyle or, li of, or actions. Our lifestyle should be pure and holy. This is in relation that we are in Christ and we are anticipating His coming. That's why in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, I will read it to you. It says, Put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So sometimes we are looking at up with our neighbors, they are having a graven images, and they are doing a idolatry. No, that is not only 
the idolatry. Idolatry is sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which, are, which is idolatry. Why it becomes idolatry? Because this is a pattern of life. This is a priority of life. It seems they could not live without this. No. As genuine Christians, we can live without all this. And in verse 6, Colossians chapter 3, verse, verse 6. On the account of this, the wrath of God is coming. So that's why there is no genuine Christians who live this kind of life. So we need to check ourselves. We need to check yourselves. So that is point number one. Point number two. In verse 14. Last verse. Live for Christ. So we are trying sometimes to get away from this actions from this type of attitudes of character Paul in his last verse he make it clear we need to live for Christ and for his glory living who is Christ and that's the only way we can avoid such lifestyle Verse 14, it says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. When we live for Christ, when we put on, it is Jesus who is living in us. A lot of Christians, they are always saying that Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. As I keep on reading, there is one guy, he said, when I say, Jesus is Lord, it means to me that all thing I should do is for Him. So, yun yung isang quotation ng isang Kristiyano. Kung sinasabi ko na ako ay Kristiyano, ibig sabihin sa akin ito ay lahat ng aking ginagawa ay para sa Kanya, subject sa Kanya, or gusto Niya. All that we have, we are doing is for Christ. Now, Paul is clear about that. In order that we can walk away, we can live in a holy and righteous way is to live for Christ. This is in another way that we need to exercise the righteousness we have from Christ. The holiness we have from Christ. Sometimes this is our problem. We just think that Jesus died at the cross and he at the right hand now praying for us. But actually he is living in us and for us. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24. It says, and put on the new self created Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So we are created in Christ. And that Christ's righteousness is imputed to us. His holiness is imputed to us. We are created after the likeness of God. Jesus is the exact image of God. He is the exact imprint. So we need or we live for Christ. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. And we have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. We have no other choice. It is not even our choice to live our own life because we are bought by Christ and we are for him. To live for Him. This is the package of salvation. When Jesus redeemed us. For us to be righteous and holy. To live for Him. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Sa atin o sa mga nagpabautismo na kay Kristo. 
put on, mabuhay na kay Kristo. So the gospel is very clear. When you are saved by Christ, then you should live by, in Christ. And even if we are struggling in our daily life, it is Christ who helps us. I just remember Jesus praying to his saints, in Luke chapter 22, verse, uh, he prayed for, for Peter. And even Jesus is praying to those whom the Father has given to him. And even Jesus is saying, I pray to the Father that the Holy Spirit will come to help you. And Paul is clear in chapter 8 that the Spirit is given to us. So we can walk, we can do not all these abominable things in the sight of God, but rather live for Christ and for the glory of God. We, we are Christians. We have the righteousness and holiness from Christ. And that's why we are able to grow in a daily basis. So church, hindi po pwede yung same, same. Kasi hindi ko kaya. Kasi mahirap lang ako. Because I am so weak. I am so poor. No. It is not the excuse. We have all in Christ. And it says, by this, in the last phrase, so by this, by living in Christ, by living for Christ, we could not make a provision for our flesh. We will not gratify the desires of our heart. This means that we have no plans to satisfy our own, our own fleshly and lustful way of life, but Christ. By loving Him more and more, and by loving others. So that's the two point of emphasis for us. So love fulfills the law. When we love Christ, when we love our, our neighbors as God loves them, in a way, we will not do harm to them. So the point of application for us is we should have to develop a loving way of life to others. We should have to develop that. Not just always making an excuse or thinking of how to pull them out or to pull them down. To have a loving way of others. Not as, so to love, to love one another, not, just, not to love another one because a lot of people they are doing that for us we are clear about it then our application should be love Christ in a daily basis as he first love us and command us to love our neighbors as he loved them as well so Paul is very clear for us as Christians we should be an obedient to our government and loving to our neighbors. As we love, we are fulfilling the law. Praise God, and I hope that you understand what the Lord wants us to do. And we as Christians, we do it not for ourselves. We do it for the glory of Christ. And for the glory of our God. Let us all pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for continuously you have given us a proper instruction because you save us by grace. And it is by your grace we can fulfill the law. It is Jesus who saved us. Because you love us, and when we love you, 
as we love you, as we love Christ. Lord, it is hard for us. But this is to show that we love you. We love Christ as our Lord and Savior. We can love our neighbors, even who they are. Our love is not to put harm with, him, with them, even to share with them the gospel, the good news about Christ. And we would like to exemplify, we would like to demonstrate how we are caring and loving to our neighbors. Thank you, Lord, and this is all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.